It's so easy to lose control of a situation, which is why I no longer walk my dog past the reptile house at the local zoo. And enemies in video games know this all too well. A potentially hostile creature might seem small and manageable at first, but then when all their mates show up as well, suddenly you're facing a swarm of individually manageable baddies who are killing you, somehow, to your eternal shame. These nasties might be on the small side, but they know their best bet is to join forces. Okay, who told these pigs about teamwork, eh? And so, with a thank you to commenter Ironic Dutch Moonshade for inspiring this list, here are the seemingly useless enemies that nevertheless overwhelmed us. Damn. The famously tough Dark Souls series teaches us valuable life lessons like A, life can be unfair and B, you can always roll away from your problems. Luke, come sort this washing up! Time to roll! <laughs> but now we can add a third lesson to that list, namely that nowhere is safe. Case in point, Medulla, the rural town in Dark Souls 2. With Medulla serving as a hub world for your adventures, you might reasonably imagine that here at least, you're safe from a humiliating demise. After all, there's sunlight, little settlements, coastal scenery, even a well with which to quench your thirst. Ah, on second thought, maybe don't drink that? Generally though, Medulla seems peaceful enough, until you encounter the three little pigs who live by this house made of bricks. They seem as innocuous as the fairy tale they're presumably inspired by, right up until they start taking chunks out of your ankles. See, you'll quickly realise that these little pigs are massively aggressive and capable of whittling down your health faster than you can say pork chops. Turning just one of them into bacon wouldn't be too tough due to their low attack speed, but the fact that all three fight you at once, combined with the fact that each pig has a sarcastically big health reserve, means there's a strong chance you'll find yourself overwhelmed by these porcine predators. How has this happened? Wow, that's a lot darker to the ending of the three little pigs that I read as a kid. Oh no wait, they boil a wolf. That's equally horrible. It is well documented that rats and the fleas that they carried were the main cause of the spread of the Black Plague back in the 1300s. Um, actually, a recent study indicates no. it might have been dirty and humans no. and the parasites that and, they carried and no. that spread the Black Plague. History facts! However, those rats didn't swarm people and strip them to the bone. Visit the Empire of the Isles in the Dishonored series and you'll stumble across plenty of these nibbly little critters who have a real taste for human flesh. One on one, they're pretty easy to deal with. They don't even come near you, instead getting on with whatever the hell they enjoy doing in this plague-ridden world. You can wander right up to them and take them out with a single sword swipe, no problem at all. But should you stumble into a group of them, they'll suddenly turn on you and try to chew through you from head to toe. Oh, I see. Won't say anything to me on your own, but get your mates around and suddenly you're a hard man. Slash rat. Nothing is more embarrassing than stumbling into a swarm of these vermin and having to either scramble out of their sharpish or admit defeat and be devoured. <gasps> to have any hope of avoiding them, you must stick to the high ground or go for the moral low ground, by which we mean chuck some dead or unconscious bodies at them to distract them while you make a run for it. You know, all of this is pretty dark. Maybe we just need to get away from Dunwall, you know, go somewhere sunny with fewer rats. Oh, a Hikanaka is really nice this time of year. Ah, yeah, okay, let's just forget that idea, it's fine. Looks like you mashed some poor feathers, dog, Sarge. It's a Zergling, Lester. Smaller type of Zerg. But he didn't be out this far unless... Oh, Now Luke's 
got really nice blue eyes. But imagine if I wanted those blue eyes for myself, so I murdered him, took the DNA that codes for those blue eyes, and then incorporated it into my own. Bit weird, right? Well, you try telling that to the Zerk. Hey, Jane, you said you wanted to meet and to bring my eyes and a gouging spoon? These DNA-obsessed aliens have subsumed all the species they have destroyed before, and not content with that, they're churning out cheap and cheerful foot soldier units with which to destroy you in the early game. Jacked up and good to go. Let's move. A Zergling is the most basic of the Zerg spiders, which makes them quick and easy to mass produce. They're on the small side as far as gross alien monsters go, and a single Zergling doesn't pose much of a threat. That being said, you still wouldn't want to meet one in a dark alley. Or a well-lit alley. Ugh. But what you really don't want to meet is a slavering horde of hundreds of Zerglings sent by a Zerg player like an angry, bitey flood to overwhelm your unprepared base with sheer numbers. This is the archetypal Zerg rush in which a roiling mass of Zerglings swarms your defences like a pack of Black Friday shoppers. Only instead of bargain flat screen TVs, the Zerglings want you shredded like human confetti. Okay, sure, this looks bad, but if there's anyone who knows how to get out of this, it's legendary Terran hero Sarah Kerrigan. Okay, Sarah, what do you got? Sarah? Oh. Oh, I see. <laughs> to paraphrase Franklin D. Roosevelt, we have nothing to fear but fear itself and those chickens from Zelda. Good old FDR. Could really turn a phrase. Any Zelda fan knows that there is one gang throughout the series capable of overwhelming even the most hardened player, the feared and respected Cuckoo Revenge Squad. <laughs> As individuals, these placid fowl will flap around agreeably, minding their own business and being impressively slow to anger. I mean, Link would only have to hit me once with the Master Sword for me to write a strongly worded letter of complaint, but these chickens can be safely swiped at several times before it all goes sideways. Let's never tell the Princess Zelda about this. What makes the Cuckoo Revenge Squad an extra humiliating way to lose hearts is the fact that, to start with, they're not even your enemy. In fact, they often help you glide, and their penchant for fierce gangland retribution can be turned to your advantage if you manage to engineer a situation in which a monster gives a cuckoo a smack. <laughs> As FDR also said, in Bokoblin culture, to be killed that way means their souls are damned forever. You can see why he got four terms. Lara Croft has had to deal with her fair share of animal attacks and even dinosaur attacks. Well, hell, and actually, dinosaurs are still animals. Oh my the god, Luke! Paleontology facts. But she's usually able to turn the tables and exterminate said hostile wildlife, even if there are several coming at her at once. For instance, Miss Croft can shake off a swarm of spiders should they get a hold of her. Unlike a certain other treasure-seeking adventurer we could name. That's embarrassing, Nathan. And though in Tomb Raider 3 a shark is a surmountable problem, Lara couldn't seem to deal with that game's smaller aquatic foe, the piranha. Piranhas are known for their ability to quickly nibble their victims to the bone, but a lone fish is a minor threat, and with Lara's aiming skills could easily be taken out with one good shot. Unfortunately for our favourite archaeologist though, these fiendishly finned foes travel in packs and are indestructible. I don't remember David Attenborough saying that on Blue Planet.
Swim too close and they will deliver swift fishy justice for Lara daring to dip her toe in their waters. However, with the addition of these enemies, there are also some friendlier, similarly modelled fish to be found in Croft Manor, who aren't looking to beat up Lara with their many, many teeth. Ah well, swims and flounderbouts. Any entomologist will tell you that flying insects are way, way gross. But luckily for all of humanity, winged bugs generally keep themselves to themselves and aren't too dangerous. And this is often true in games as well. Consider for instance Fallout's bloat flies, which are indisputably horrible, but are easily dispatched. And we don't mean with the drinking glass and a newspaper method. But the radioactive wastelands of the Fallout universe have a more unpleasant surprise in store for anyone who wanders too far from civilization. The wasp like Cazador, a truly horrible beast that gets its name from the Spanish word for hunter. What's the Spanish for that's disgusting getaway? Es asqueroso, alejate. Man, everything sounds better in Spanish. What's truly horrible about Cazadors, though, is that they hunt in a swarm, and though you might initially not stress much about battling one of them, the rest of the hive will never be far behind, encircling you with their unpleasant compound eyes, stabbing you hard in the fleshy parts with their knife-like poison stingers. Until you're forced to concede that having fought entire armies of radioactive scavengers, your adventuring days are about to be cut short by what's basically a glorified bee. Although in your defence, these pack-hunting baddies are really very glorified, having, in the fiction of the game, escaped from their birthplace in a DNA splicing lab. A scientific process that entomologists call mega grossening. Murlocs in the Warcraft series are most famous for the noise they make, which sounds exactly like someone being hit in the throat with a football. See? Sorry, Andy. But that's not all these slimy little bipeds are known for. An individual Murloc in World of Warcraft is no cause for alarm, usually having little armour to speak of and being only a few feet high. But the thing is, you'll hardly ever encounter just one murloc, because these amphibious ne'er-do-wells usually hang around in massive gangs and will never hesitate to charge into the fray if they perceive a threat to their way of life, like an adventurer out to harvest their precious, precious fins. What? People need murloc fins! The synthetic ones just don't taste the same. The murlocs almost always have the last laugh, or weird throat gurgle though, because stepping into their territory is a guaranteed way to get mobbed. And when you inevitably try to flee from the gathering horde of tribal frog warriors, somehow more always seem to get stuck in. No murlocs, I plead clemency! Oh, now it's time to walk your ghost back to murloc town. Ugh, damn murlocs, so frustrating! It just makes you wanna go... Andy, do the noise. My throat. Call the hospital. <sighs> so there are some of the smaller enemies that were totally fine on their own, but if there were lots of them, it, it was just like a real pain, and you had to deal with them. And yeah, they really, they really were buzz kills. <laughs> buzz, buzz bees. Uh, but anyway, if you really enjoyed this video, then maybe you like. One of these, yeah? Maybe you'll enjoy one of those. And if you really like this video, you should click the subscribe orb and also click the bell button so that you know. Speaking of when, swarms, actually, quite um, interesting historical yeah, story. In uh, 1881, a swarm of bees do... flew down the Strand yeah, yeah, in London. Yeah. Uh, it was quite the consternation. Um, I'm imagining from the that is an amazing um, thing. Yeah, cool. it was uh, quite the talk of uh, that <sighs> month's issue of Punch.